Solar stocks have been one of the worst sectors of the past year down big, but finding a little bit of buying activity the last few weeks. Maheep Mandeloy joins us from Mizuho America's Managing Director and Research Analyst. Uh, Maheep, thanks for being here. Can you kind of first summarize for us uh, in a minute or so kind of how we got here, why such an unfavorable trend the last year in solar broadly? Absolutely, and uh, Oliver, thanks for having me over here. Uh, so the, the, the interest rates has been one of the biggest issues for the renewable industry. This industry, uh, in most cases, is dependent on financing for projects, and that is one of the reasons why we saw uh, demand somewhat slow down in residential solar and some of the other industries. And then on top of that, we also see off late some issues with uh, the utility solar renewables industry, where demand is pretty good, but we're facing interconnection challenges. It's getting difficult for uh, developers on the renewable industry side to add more solar wind projects at a faster pace. So I think th those are the main reasons uh, on the fundamental side. And then on the valuation side, you have multiple compression, uh, just given what, what interest rates have uh, done. And this industry generally qualifies on the growth and scape, right? And there was a lot of enthusiasm after the Inflation Reduction Act was passed. And uh, there's also some delays on how much of those policies or how many of those policies translated into um, say earnings growth for most of the names. And oh, as you're definitely seeing uh, 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 most of the ETFs down over the last year or two. Uh, but at the same time, you have some companies uh, uh, outperforming S&P and the ETF, right? Uh, because they benefited from the Inflation Reduction Act. So, there's, I would say, some spots where you'd see some uh, positive uh, uh, movement. If you had to kind of break down those two main forces, interest rates and the cost of capital expenses versus uh, the kind of exuberance around uh, the uh, legislation and too much maybe build out as a result of that. Uh, I, I wonder how is that trade off? Because I look at like housing, for example, a very rate sensitive sector that it has connections to solar. People build houses and some of those houses get solar panels. The housing trade's been very resilient. It seems like people are always waiting in the wings. So if it were pure rates, I would think that housing would be a lot worse too. So where does that incremental negativity on the solar side come from? Sure, and, and that is more on the residential solar side, which is just a sub-segment of the, the, the whole industry. Sure. Um, but over there, you are uh, competing against electric bills, right? And if you're, and it's somewhat similar to, I think uh, the analogy I would use is more like buying a car uh, on finance or lease, and you generally buy a solar on your home on, uh, on a loan or a lease. And I think that's where it's hurting the most, where your monthly solar bills are increasing or have increased over the last two years versus uh, for new customers, that is, and versus the electric bills haven't increased that much. So I think that's probably the pressure we're seeing over there, and that's what's impacting the residential solar side of the uh, equation here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did these companies load up on, uh, I mean, did they build out a bunch and now they can't sell them? Is it kind of like the EV thing where there's cars that have to get slashed down prices? How much of the inventory mismatch is there with demand right now? Uh, that's a great question. Actually, that, uh, we'll be seeing that in the solar module manufacturing side of the industry. Globally, there's a uh, supply glut of solar modules being uh, manufactured, produced in Asia mostly. Uh, and we've seen module prices fall by more than 50%. All of that should help or is actually helping the residential solar companies or even these big utility solar farms because module prices coming down actually helps reduce their total capex, so which somewhat offsets the, uh, the interest rate pressure they're seeing on the financing side. But beyond that, um, we're also seeing that in the batteries, the same batteries used in EVs are used uh, next to big solar projects or even in the homes, and that's also helping a bit. So it's actually helped in most cases, uh, these you know, the, uh, deflationary pressures, if you will, across the space, but not as much to offset the interest rate pressure yet. Who's uh, a leader in the group, Maheep? If we want to take a stab without being tied down to an uh, you know, over-inventoried, rate-pressured sector, uh, you know, like obviously we watch First Solar a lot, which has done okay. But uh, who else is a way to kind of play this from a stock-specific standpoint? 
uh, first order is actually a top pick. Uh, they do benefit a lot uh, because apart from, as in they're definitely a model manufacturer, but they also uh, are uh, a beneficiary of the Inflation Reduction Act. They benefit from all the anti-China policies. So setting uh, them aside, uh, uh, the, uh, the next tracker uh, and uh, GE Vanova, uh, which is the renewable business of GE, which spun off recently. Mm. Those two are my other top picks. And again, in general, I think we've seen this theme where uh, investors have preferred the utility uh, capital good, so utility renewable capital good sector. Um, and I think that trade will go on for a while here. All right. Uh, Mahib, thank you very much for the analysis and uh, uh, the explanation. Good stuff. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. Mahib Mandaloy from Mizuho Americas. All right, the GE play. I almost forgot about that, too.